Okay, so, 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 uh, me, black and white only, and I need to find, okay, black and white only, and I need to open that up, so that, Oh, fuck, dude. Okay, Swiss works. Nice. Resetting DVD drive. I don't even know what this thing has. So that's the DVD device. Oh, switch my wave bird on. Uh, this does not even have an SP to SD. I should really do this one. I want to... Um, I want to... I wanna, I wanna, well, this has a Xeno in it, but doesn't have anything else. Doesn't have an SP to SD thingy thingy. I need a I need more of these. I need to find this SP. I need to find this on AliExpress. I need to order, 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 order SP to, no, SD to SP2. Did I order? Wait, fuck, did I already order one of those? Or not? Oh, I... Oh, okay, I already ordered one. That's alright. But... But, 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 what, what, in the butt? What, what? in the butt. I already have one. Do I need another one? Nah, maybe. Hmm. Probably could use one anyway. I'm going to use the Pico. Fine, I'll buy another SP to SD. Going to AliExpress.
uh, but that's fine. Uh, I can also have one burnt disc. The GC's over here. Okay. Well, that worked. Oh, dang, it's in color. Oh, well, what's the fucking use? Oh, now it's black and white. Aha, aha, aha. Now it's in color again. Jeez, it looks fucking good. Huh, okay. Hmm. So that just now works fine. Can't make. Uh, we can try. Oh, this is this is a component only cable. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so. Let's try a composite cable because I need, it's very intermittent. Intermittent? Inter, intermittent. And of course, the first time that I come to live stream, it fucking works just fine. Good. Okay, here we go. You can see that in black and white. So, go back to S video again. Black and white. So it's very, back to black and white. This screen's got this interference around here this is something for another day there's some sort of other interference that's happening here uh, like flickering that's something I'm gonna need I think mr. Steve to help me on that one but it's okay uh, the black and white is the issue here so definitely works everything's all right I need to open this up I need to reflow a couple of points uh, so let's open it up and see how it goes. I know no one's on this stream right now, but it's kind of fun talking to myself. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of fun talking to myself. Uh, all right. I'll switch off the GC. I'll take off that. Uh, need a cup of tea. Mm, bad boy for life. So now I'm going to open up this unit here. Uh, 
Um, we could probably angle this down a little bit, huh? Push that back a little bit, see a bit more. Uh, putting my screws away. Because I don't want to lose them. So I'm opening the, I'm opening it for the first time. You gotta be very careful. Okay, I gotta discharge it first, so. What have I missed? Wait, have I missed some screws? Oh, I missed some screws. Of course. Flame an idiot. Oh, and another one on the back, of course. Okay. Let's try and discharge it. I'm going to discharge using this tool, which I created and built because Mr. Steve Nutter showed me how to do it. Long before Steve and I ever did the podcast, I was just a humble fan of Steve Nutter, just like you are. And he has a video showing you how to properly discharge a monitor. And this is it. You got to hook this little thing here. Yeah. So it's just a bit of wire attached to a screwdriver that I'm gonna put in here. Uh, oh, you can't get to the anode cap on this one. Hmm. All right. Do not follow my lead at home. I'm trying to discharge it. This is a little bit, I'm pretty sure I've done it right, but do not follow this lead. Uh, on how to discharge. These ones are difficult because the anode cap is kind of glued on. So I have to find some alternative points to discharge it from. <laughs> okay. So, all right. So what, uh, to do this fix, I need to identify some resistor, uh, sorry, some capacitors that are right here. And uh, let's get rid of that. And I basically should just have to re-flow them. But, uh, so this is a known problem with these models. The Sony fix says that there's two caps, two, no, variable resistors, variable capacitors, I forget. Anyway, one or two things, and you got to replace them and then add uh, a resistor over it. However, uh, Steve and I were talking, and we think you should just have to reflow the points, and that's probably enough. We think the Sony fix is like the proper, proper, proper way to do it, but reflowing proper time. Uh, so I need to find those points. Let's open this up. So the nice thing about these little ones is these sideboards will drop down pretty easily. Anyway, I'm gonna wait. That has to unclip there. That has to unclip. There we go. Okay. So it's kind of hard to see, but I'm pretty sure it's these two here. Um, I know I, next time maybe I'll have an overhead shot. We can see a little better, but I'm pretty sure it's C. Yeah, it's these two red ones right here, hmm, I think. And CV102. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. CV102 and those ones. So that's 
So I've got two there and I need to reflow them here on the other side of the board, which is over here. Okay. So they are... Uh, I can't see. Will that help? Oh, it's raining outside. It's raining. I really do put on a strong Australian accent when I start streaming. Uh, okay, maybe I'm gonna go gentle settle Colin. So the question is, where are they? They're right here, which puts them here. But this is a s huh. Okay. So, all right, I can see here, the CV-101 and CV-102, and I know these are the correct ones. So, what's the, on the other side, but can I, oh, where's Steve? I need Steve's help. Because I can't see where these little pots come through on the other side. Uh, a bunch of these stuff's a, I mean, that's through holes, so it's, Hard to kind of see unless I angle it up. But, um, they're there. I cannot work out which ones we which. Also, I'm. I need this bad boy. That's what my girlfriend laughs at. I'm now a dude with a magnifying glass. Okay, so oh, I can see CV one hundred and one here. Okay, and CV one hundred and two. Okay, so I can see something. So I'm gonna try and just reflow some points and see if that does something so cv it's that one there okay uh okay let's try let's get the soldering on up the soldering iron just do cable management uh, flux solder pad to wipe my thing on uh, my setup is very small and cramped as you can see and uh I'm just making the best I can do. Hmm. 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 Okay. So. Let us uh, turn on the soldering station. Yes, that has power. Where's that? Ah, uh, oh, my soldering station's missing a port. Uh, okay. I was missing a pad at the bottom. 
God damn, where'd that pad go? Okay, now it's not stable. Yes. Okay, soldering iron's height. Uh, so CV101 is here. CV102 is there. I'm going to put... Some solder on such things. Hey. <laughs> and I gotta work around this microphone for the first time. Because I have never done this with a microphone before. Uh okay. So C V one oh one. Let's try and add a little flux. Sorry, add a little solder. So, the thing about this is Steve is telling me that these small PVMs really have problems with cold solder joints. Uh, and a lot of times it's just reflowing bits. So I'm happy that this is a known problem, at least can identify which part I'm supposed to be reflowing. Ooh, okay. I mean, if you watch any of my videos, you know I'm freaking terrible at soldering. Jesus, I hope I didn't... Jeez, did I burn that trace? Oh, boy. Ow! God Okay, reflow that one. Reflow that one. That one's reflowed. That one's reflowed. <sighs> okay, so in theory, that's... Well, let's see, because in theory, that's all I need to do. Is reflow, reflow, reflow those two. Uh... Okay. But it is cool. Uh, too bad. Um, I guess I can try. And then we can go from there. So, ugh, power cable mm. comes out of the monitor. Uh, power cable comes out of the soldering iron and goes into the VVM. I'm gonna turn it this way. Oi, there we go. Um, here, I'll put that back up for the moment. All right, comes back on, that's a good sign. Uh, let's turn the GameCube on. I'm using a NTSC GameCube outputting S video. Let's load it in. Nope, that's in black and white. Oh, it's in color. Will it stay in color though? Okay, so this is on this video. Mm. So this is the thing. Okay, well that's... Color. What happens when I screw it? Please be color. Hmm. Right. Oh, right. Port did it dodgy? But, okay. Is it my cables with dodgy? Why did it do that? 
but color. Okay. Yes. Oh, I can see. I'm looking at you on the screen there. Yo, hey, uh, Co. Brian. Uh, yeah, this is a nine nine inch or eight inch. Uh, the these small ones. It's a nine oh four four D, and Sony. Um, they have a weird naming scheme. Like the American ones that Steve has have called like eight. They're they're eight oh four. So this plug is. There's also something up with this plug. See, it's there and then back. But is that? Hmm. Maybe it's just this unit. Okay. But nevertheless, color. And by the way, S video on this thing looks woo. Uh, all right. So let's try composite. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, boy. So even composite looks clear on this thing. Um, the composite looks clear. It, it's some interference in it, sure, because it's composite, but it... The BVM makes anything look good. I don't know if I can... What happens if I tilt that up? Okay, I'm going to need to work on exactly how to show... Uh, exactly how to show this on, uh, on my camera. But this is composite and it's now in color. Uh, let's try the other ports. So... Doo -doo 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 -doo. I'll try the... It's got a second composite port, which is... This one, and that works in color too. Mario Power Tennis. Uh, this is the only real game that I have burnt for GameCube right now. Everything else is on my retro NAS. Uh, it's the only disc that I have, and I'm using uh, an NTSC GameCube because it outputs S video. So, yeah, that's real nice. Nice, 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 nice. So, again, let's double check because I don't want to get my hopes up because. It has this. So no, I think so. So that looks fine. It looks freaking excellent, actually. Uh, so that's cool. I spent so long trying this before, and then Steve was like, "You're an idiot. Just these two points. That's all you have to reflow." So because the, the problem with this is the this model accepts RGB and composite. Uh, sorry, it accepts RGB component on one input. That has no color problem. That's always good. Uh, but it's the composite and S-video line that in this model always has black and white problems. And I have three of them here. I have about five of these. And they all have the black and white problem. But that's kind of fixed it. Let's go back to S-video then. Uh, okay. So S video back in again. Beautiful. S video is looking good. So I think I'm going to do... I have a few more of these monitors. I think I'm going to do them all right now. Uh, cool. I, <laughs> this is great. Um, oh, yeah. I look like weird. You can't see my face. So, yeah, this one is going okay. Um, these are great monitors. I picked up the last one of these. These go... I, uh, locally, these go for about 50 euros. I bought the last one for 50 euros, uh, even though that was the fifth one that I have. Uh, it got four, but only five. I only need to spend 50 euros on it. Um, 
I'm so happy. I'm really happy with this. That looks great. I'm not... Oh, yeah. I have a problem with the port here, but this is a separate issue. This looks freaking amazing in person. So clear, so fine. Really nice on this small screen. And I'm very happy that we fixed this black and white problem. Just in time for me to work on Mike Simone's new S video cores. Maybe, 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 maybe. So... This is the first of my monitors. Uh, I was going to stream with Bob in a while, but I think not for another hour. So I may as well do the other one. This one's good. I'm going to put it back together and then I'm going to open up another one and do the same thing to that while I've got everything here. So let's do that. Uh, nee. Okay, I can turn it off, unplug the cable, uh, remove my discharge tool. Where's my screwdriver? So that's all nicely in there. Remove my discharge tool. Ooh, unplug power. Let's get a little downward shot. Let's get a little downward doggy on that one. So let's screw this guy back together. Where's that one go? Okay. So if we look at the back of this monitor, let me sit down. It's a bit easier. Um, if you look at the back here, these are great because we have RGB and component inputs and you switch here. So whether where this input is getting RGB or component, that's a physical switch on the back. Then it also can accept composite and S video. And there's one here. It takes the S video. It can also chain it through. This way, you can do your little loop-de-loop. -loop. And on this line, you could do S-Video or Composite. And there's a whole separate line that will only take Composite. So these are great monitors. And if you get, if you chance, if you can get one, I don't know, I got this for 50 bucks, 50 euros. Uh, wait, I forgot to screw something in here. Let's do that. So let's piece this one back together. So this is good. I'm... Look at me. I'm Steve Nutter. I know how to fix monitors. Blah, blah, blah. I'm retro tech. Here I am. I'm in the bunker. Uh, I'm screw <laughs> Wait, the screw isn't going in properly. Uh, let's get that in. Okay. All right. And we can put the lid on. Put that. Uh, and then basically screw it back up. And I'm going to head on to the second monitor of three. Uh, so if you've just joined in, I've had great success. So this fix for these 9044, for these small monitors, it's... Um, a known problem with these monitors, and you can fix it by reflowing some points. The, there is an official Sony service bulletin that says you're supposed to replace these little variable capacitors. Um, but if you just need a quicker fix in the time I have today, you can reflow the points and it works just fine. So let's stitch this bad boy back together again. Um, thank you very much for, for joining in. I've never streamed my work before and I'm a bit I don't know nervous nervous about streaming my work streaming I was a bit nervous about streaming does that seem straight oh there we go um hmm. that is not in flush Kinda? What's wrong with this? Why is this not in flush? Let's, that one is. Yeah, that's a bit better. So. Um, yeah, thanks a lot. I'm not trying to pretend I am very professional at this. My training is 
talking a lot to Steve. I don't know if that's very good training or not. Or if that's doctor recommended in any way. This doesn't want to sit flush. There's probably some secret that I don't know about how this goes on. Is that... Okay, there we go. Yeah, the, the soldering was easy. That was the easy part. Screwing the lid back on, hard part. Is that flush enough? Okay. Come on, you bastard. Okay. What a, when people do these, I got my little microphone. When people do these streams, do you have music? Should I have music? Should I have some little Mario theme playing in the background or something like that? This mic as well, a bit funny. <laughs> hey, Steve. Uh, yeah, man, I'm doing that stream with Bob and then uh, later on and I got everything set up and I was like, let's fucking do this. So, yo, Steve, I fixed this one. Yo, the color is good. I just reflowed those points and... It works straight up, so I'm gonna do another one. So that's number one in the bag. Uh, let's do this one, which is sitting right here. All right. Uh, this, so this is the next one I'm going to do. So let's take the screws off this one and we're going to open up, do the same thing, reflow those points. I'm sorry that I can't show you the board uh, a bit closer. This is my first time doing such a stream. So next, maybe, I don't know, top down. I'm not sure. I guess it depends on the, like the sort of thing you're doing, right? Uh, good, good advice. Yes, yeah, Steve, I was, I was explaining earlier uh, that about the story that uh, there is an official Sony service bulletin that says you've got to replace these variable capacitors, add in a couple of something, some other component, but just reflowing the points works. So, uh, let's grab that. All right, lid off. Um, hey, Steve, as well, what is the best way to discharge these small ones? Like, as you know, the anode cap is glued on. So, because I got my little Steve Nutter approved uh, discharge tool. So, this is a discharge tool. The idea is you, you connect it to ground. Um, you connect it to ground and then you can prod around and discharge it. And I made this tool from Steve's video before I knew Steve, before long time before any of that. Uh, I was already going to him for advice. <laughs> you just don't do it. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I think, okay. So while uh, no discharge on those little ones, right. So while discharging CRTs is a controversial thing because CRTs, ha ooh, CRTs have much, much electricity, much, much volts going through them. And typically you got to discharge them, which is to remove the electricity, excess electricity that's going on in there. Um, because like there's a lot. And if you don't, if you I don't know what you're doing, uh, and you zap yourself, there's a lot of volts that you could potentially get. However, so the point is, do not do as I do. Uh, as Steve said, it's very difficult to sort of manually discharge this one. And the reason I'm not going to go any further with my discharging right now is because I just need to reflow some points here. I don't need to get in here. I don't need to mess around with the rest of it. Uh, so... I'm just going to be attacking a couple of points over here. Certainly, if you are going to be doing anything on the inside of a CRT, 
please review the information, check out videos, understand what you're doing. Um, yes, yeah, Sonic Underwater music. Well, it might work. I can put whatever's happening on the background. So I'm going to... So again, these little 9044Ds. So these are nice. They're very compact. Let's just have a quick look here. We've got our tube. Um, yeah. They're, so they're, they're kind of these... The, the main... There's a board at the bottom, board at the sideboard here, and they're all very tightly compacted in. And... What else can we see here? If I, I don't know if you can see that, but that says Sony uh, BVM 9044D, October 1996. So, Mr. S. Zezeran, Louis S. No, that middle name is Joseph. Louis J. Zezeran was 16, no, 15 in October 1996 when this was built. So, keyboard over there so I'm gonna unclip that unclip that and now this board wants to come down but what you've got to do is just take out some of this cabling here just it's um some of this cabling is just tied up here so you've got to just this one can come undone there that one's undone is that gonna do it oh oh and there's a Huh. You know what? This one here. Uh, <laughs> you know, Steve, I think I didn't connect this one back on that other monitor. It all seems to work, um, but I haven't... It looks like a ground? Oh, yeah, it's just a ground. Okay, but I'll definitely do that. So I'm going to unplug that one. It's going to come down, and I don't think I... There's two... It's just connected to this cross beam. Nah. Are we still streaming? Good. Okay. Sorry, I hit the wrong button. It's just the ground loop. Okay, fair enough. Well, I'll go back and do that one later. So, uh, we can hold up here. How to show you. So, that's the sideboard there. There are two... Uh, what are the variable resistors? Variable capacitors? So they're there, and what I'm going to do is reflow them under there. So first of all, actually, let us... I haven't even tested this one yet. So let's turn it on uh, and just double check that it's actually coming out in black and white. Uh, that's there. And let's get our S video coming from our NTSC GameCube. And all right, so we get a picture. Turn off the underscan, and that's definitely only black and white. So it's hard. I know this camera, this one that I have, is not good with CRTs. Um, I think my cable is a bit dodgy. See that? I'm wiggling that. Actually, I think that's not the port. I think that's my S video cable. Oh, the this is one of the cables from the Foo off uh, eBay, and he's like in Poland, so uh, he was good postage for me. But also, having said that, I I'm not trying to say I look after my shit very well either. So, however, the point is that our S video is definitely in black and white. Um, it's definitely showing up in black and white. It can be very intermittent. Uh, it'll be color for a while, and then black and white. So I'm going to go through now, uh, turn this off, resolder those points. We're going to fire it back up and see how that goes. So let's turn that off. Unplug power. Take out that. We are going to... It's a little bit easier for me. Because actually, technically, I don't even need to pull it this way. Um because I need to just get at these points here, but let's fire up the... So I think this is my soldering station. Um, I thought I think this was the Volta one. I don't know, he's what, you know, like the one where he's going on like, get this cheap one from Banggoods or AliExpress. Uh, it works, works fine, good, all good. No problems with this. The price was good. So I'm gonna 
can turn that on. Give that a moment to heat up. Magnifying glass. Let's have a quick look. CV101 and CV102 are the two points that I need to reflow. Um, Steve, if you're still there, when you were... Uh, oh, the beep says that the iron is ready. Steve, when you were resold, when you were reflowing these points, did you add extra solder or do you just apply the iron and let that do the job? Because I can see that they reflow. Uh, let's do that. Let's get a little flux on there. I've just got this liquid flux. It's fine. It's easy enough. I've got some other flux as well, but I like this one because I can just paste it on like this. I'm getting some more from my local store real soon. Uh, okay, so yes, add a little bit of solder. So let's start by, we've added our flux. And again, sorry that I can't show you this in more detail. Maybe next time I'll have a have two cameras. Why not three cameras? But I'm going to get in there, heat up the point. Um, I'm going to add a little salt to that. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. There we go. That's it. That's reflowed. Come to Papa. Come on. Come to Butthead. There we are. There we are. That's it. And one more. One more. Come on, so I'm just applying my iron and then waiting for that point to uh, liquefy. Clean that up a little bit. Let me see. The thing. Uh, we'll just add a touch of solder. Let that re. Just add a bit. Ooh, fumes. I don't have no fume extractor or nothing like this. I got a window. <laughs> okay. So, in theory, that's all it was. And that's all it was on the last one. So, I'll turn up my iron. Uh, let's have a little bit of an old man inspection. Mm, well. Should do the job. Okay. So, we're going to... Grab this bad boy that way. Repurpose my power lead for the monitor. I use the same power cable for the monitor and for my soldering iron. So I can't solder when the thing's on. Probably good. All right, what are we looking at here? Oh, yeah, baby. Look at that. That's color. Wait, because this is my cable's crap as we talked about. I'll just hold it. Fuck it. Um, yeah, color on S video. Looking good. Uh, S video on these BVMs looks tremendous. And you want to believe that RGB or component. So, yeah, that's it. That's uh, Mario. It's the only disc that I've got in this one. So, yeah, real nice. I'll, uh, I'm going to. So, yeah, looking good. I'm going to switch over to composite and just try that input. So another thing is... Okay, yep. Just plug and unplug a few times. Just making sure that's looking good. Happy with that. Uh, do -ba -do -ba. So... Now I've got a composite cable plugged in. Let's plug it in there. Booyah. Oh, it's just the thing. I was like, what's up? Turn on my wave bird. It's easy to control it across the room. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, composite. 
unbelievable looking composite. So good. I wish I was better at filming screens to show you. So it's still very clear. I see a little bit of interference, but not much. And it, it cleans up the composite so well. Because what the BVM is doing is it, it's essentially more or less... The circuitry in it is so good, it's going to be able to clean it up for you a lot. How many monitors do I have? I think I've got five of them. And I've got three here right now and another two in my storage room. So, yeah, composite's looking good. I'll try the other composite port. So, I've got three here. I've got five, uh, two more in my storage room. I'll bring them back and fix them up as well. This is... I'm good to go now. Uh... Let's try. Okay, so there's a second composite port that also works. That's also looking good. Turn the monitor off. We'll do a little test this way. So this is really, as fixes go, as easy as you want to get for something as complex and as beautiful. As a BVM, I literally had to resolder four points and I fixed the black and white on that. So yeah, I'm gonna put this one back together and then I'm gonna have a crack at the last one because I think Bob, I think I'm gonna stream with retro RGB Bob um, in about half an hour if he gets his shit together. So cool, all right. Um, Well, you see, there's more... Wa I mean, that's the capture. You see more waviness than there actually is. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's hard to tell from... Apparently, the this is a Sony ZV-1 camera, and apparently they're not real good at doing CRTs, and I haven't looked into that more. So, yeah, I'm going to stitch this one back up and try the next one. So, let's do that. Uh, unplug that. Okay. Take out my power cable. I'm going to add. So, show the people your work, Lewis. Show them. They said, just reconnect that bad boy here. Um, this cabling, you can just put this together a little bit like this. Uh, sort of collect these cables so they're not just hanging out around there. I mean, it's not a big problem. It's just a cable tidiness issue. So we're going to do that. That's there. All right. Oh, yeah. Hey, Austin. Uh, I, you know, I haven't had a lot of chance to go through them, unfortunately, mate. Uh, those, those links you sent. I mean, <laughs> I could do a crazy Indian guy right now. I could sit here eating my curry and do it. <laughs> Love to my Indian brothers. So again, if you're just joining in on this one, these small nine inch monitors are great. We've got this is an RGB and component input here. That's one line. Uh, you can switch from RGB to component using this toggle here. And then we've got one line which has S video or component. You can choose. And then one, oh, sorry, S video or composite. And then we've got a line that's just composite. So these are one of those are excellent because they do everything for you. It's got all the things that I possibly need uh, in a very small thing. They look great, they're not that expensive. Uh, I do recommend. So let's... Uh, okay, there was the two screws that go there. And then this one over here. So this keeps this sideboard secure. It doesn't have to be too tight because it's already got two clips here. Um, just needs to hold it on. And then let's put that lid on. Oh yeah. Mm, 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 mm. Give it to me. Give it to me, you bad BVM. 
bad boy of analog monitors, the BVM. Alright, here we go. I'm going to put one in there, and I'll put one in the other side. <laughs> um, you know what? It's, it's interesting. So, Austin, that was an Indian bloke, was it, who did that? Because... Uh, it's similar in a way that I was chatting a little bit with the AliExpress seller Retrocastle, who's been getting a bit of exposure. Bob just talked about him in this week's roundup because he makes those interesting IO boards. Uh, he's made a, what was it? He made the snack adapter for PSX. And he's, and I talked to him a bit. He's a Chinese guy and he's living in China and he's got a degree in electrical engineering and he does sort of, this Ali, it makes this stuff, uh, you know, with his spare time, more or less. He's got a day job. And what I found interesting talking to Retro Castle was that um, he has no part shortage. You know, it's tough for us to find the parts to get the things in. We all, we've all heard ad nauseum about the global part shortage, right? In China, there's not really a part shortage. They can get whatever they want. So that's a big thing. The next part is that he told me that he literally lives in the same town as the factory where they fabricate the PCBs. Like, same town. Like, he went over there and was t hanging out, talking with them, and they were giving him tips on, like, how to solder better and better techniques and different things like that. So, think about that. What, that that's why I'm so fascinated by Ivory is the guy's name in English. And Retro Castle is his handle. He's this dude who's like clearly very intelligent, knows what's up. And he has, what could you do if you had no part shortage and you literally had the PCB factory next door? And when he does, when he makes, um, you know, his products. Okay, that's good. So I'll just give it one final quick test to make sure it's stitched up okay. So when Retro Castle makes his stuff, he makes like 20 revisions. Because, of course, if you have to make a revision, even if you're using Bob's favorite PCB way or whatever the hell it is, um, you got to send it away. It's got to come back. It costs you money. He just gets, he can be like, next one, next one, next one. And gets, he can easily get 20 revisions of something made. So I'm, I'm fascinated by that sort of thing. Because he's like almost... In some ways, for at least for the hobby, he's living like it's it's a very ideal situation. He can get parts that he wants. Like they have access in China to parts that, like marketplaces of parts that we don't have access to. Behind the scenes, Chinese stuff gets it very quickly. Of course, because it comes from China, it's like it's right there. He's getting parts quickly. He's getting stuff fabricated quickly. That's why he's making. I'm not. He's making good stuff because he's amazing, right? Uh, Ivory is a very smart guy. He's a cool dude. And, uh, you know, he really cares. You can see that he cares about things like dock crawl and small things and issues. And, um, you know, he, he knows what's up. And he has access to all these amazing uh, tools and, so and resources, like parts that come straight away, like getting PCBs fabricated really quickly. And in some ways, I'm very jealous because he's just, he can live out some dreams of that way of making this stuff. So cool. Color looks good. Let's do the next one. So while certainly, I don't know, I don't know about your opinion. I'm not sure if we, we I would want to live in China. However, there's an upside to Ivory doing what he does, that he has access to a lot of stuff that we don't have access to in the West. Cool. So monitor number two done. Put that one in the done pile. And uh, I got one more. All right, number three. Number three. Uh, I have a note written here which says dark screen. So we're going to see. I thought this one had a bit of a screen problem. Maybe it's been on too long. Uh, so let's open this one up. Let's go, champ. Come on. Here we go.
Need two cameras for this work. I can see this one camera down here. Otherwise, I'm like, Ew. I gotta duck down. I can't show you guys everything that I want to show you. But okay, that comes off. Same thing, just as the last ones. You can see our tube. Um, God, who were we talking to that we were talking to? I think it was when Steve and I. We're talking to Andy King, and he was explaining to us that the longer the CRT tube, generally the better quality it is. So the longer they can make it, the better it is. And it's got to do with, see, the, the, the electrons are coming here and they're firing pew, 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 and they're being fired down this way, and then they have to go pew, 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 pew right? And if you have a really short monitor, here, I can put that that way. If you have a really short one, then this angle becomes much larger. It's got to go like out there. And that makes geometry at the edges really hard and not so good. So if you have a longer CRT, a longer tube, then this angle doesn't have to be as uh, big. And it's easier to get geometry at the corner. So that's why... These small ones all are very long and you'll generally see, at least in my experience, most BVMs are longer than your average consumer set. So let's, uh, uh, let's, un let's unscrew that. My screws away. So I don't lose them. So I don't even need to open this up. Last time I was opening it up just sort of more to show you, but all I need to do that ah, not good. Uh, there's four points here that I need to resolder: a CV 101, CV 102, and same as last time. I'm just going to resolder those. But let's um. I mean, we haven't tested this one. Wait, let's test this one. Plug in composite cable. Uh, so this, also this model does has no on-screen display. So you've got a, there's a bunch of buttons here and you need to sort of understand how they work and click through them. Oh, there's color, but it's dim. Like I was saying, this looks, dim this screen this is september 1996 so this is a month older than my last one now i can see i don't know if this is proper you can see some flickering here this is some color issues coming out um it's definitely darker so yeah it'll go i, I think what i'll do is i'll just play with this for a bit and i bet you it fully turns to black and white by the time I'm done with it. So that's aperture phase. It's contrast. It's very, yeah, it is dark, but the, so even when I turn brightness up as popping, that's definitely not as bright. Actually on the screen, it looks bright. Oh, there we go. Color, 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 medium. Um, Underscan. So I don't know. Yeah, this, there may be greater difficulties with this particular one that uh, I may need more help with from Mr. Nutter later, but. So there, I'll try another input. Switching it over to the other input. Same thing, it's. It's not quite black and white. There's some, oh, geez, look at that. It's kind of flicking between color. You can see it there alternating. Color, not color, color, not color. 
So, okay, what I'll do is let's just do the repair and then see how it looks after that. Take that out. Put it this way. Transplant my power cable into my soldering iron. Okay, let that heat up for a moment. Whew, it's kind of hot this afternoon. I'm gonna need a drink or something. Do I have any beers? Cool guys. Um, yeah, thanks very much again all for watching. I appreciate you sticking around. Um, I'm kind of just doing the same thing over and over again. It's a little bit boring, but I'll just... Okay, so CV101, CV102, I found the same points. So just like last time, what I'm going to do first of all to reflow these points is I'm going to apply my iron and just you just put the tip of the iron there Watch it go molten, and then once it goes molten, then I'm going to add a little extra solder to it. So I'm just going to... Oh, wait. Flux, flux, flux. Flux. I've got the flux that helps these things. There's not much left in my little container, but let's be a little generous with that. Okay. Flux in Estonian is... Yorteverdelik. Yorteverdelik. Your. No, your. 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 Yorteverdelik. Means. Uh, five bucks. So, now, let's do that. Let's do the same thing again. Apply that. And any moment now, that'll go molten. There we go. Good, 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 good. Going on to the next point. Goes molten, very nice. So when I mean molten, I mean I'm reflowing the point, right? That, yes, so that point. And number four, apply enough heat so that it melts, reflows that point. So now that I've got all four that have been uh, melted because my experience i'm not like super experienced with this but um it's that sometimes old solder points are hard to reflow so what happens is you get a solder point this has been here for what, 1996 so it's been here for many 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 years and it kind of grows old and cracked and dried wait what's going on here and so what you've got to do is melt it reflow that solder and then it melts and sets again and then it's all good so that's all I have to do at this point here. But also what I'm going to do is now that I've... Uh, the first time to reflow it once is the hardest. And then after that, it should reflow easily. So now I've done it once. What I'm going to do is also add some extra solder just for good luck. So it's going to... There we go. <laughs> okay. Point number two. Add a little bit extra in. There we go. <laughs> no fumes extraction here. I haven't even got the I got the blinds closed, so there's not too much light coming in. <sighs> Good. This is my third one and it is better than my first one. You got to practice. Okay. So turn that off. Do a little visual inspection. What's that? Oh, that's a trace. Okay. Yep. Should be good. I think so. Uh, knee. So let's turn it back over. And let's see. So this was a bit of a problem one. How's that color going to go? Wait, it's that one. Hmm. Still issues on this one. 
because it's not there's something weird about this color it's not quite black and white it's dark and is there a gun missing because blue only does nothing So this is one where I think what I should do is load the 240p test suite. This might be... So first of all, uh, so let's do that. And if I bring it in on the other one... So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to switch the cube. I've got a separate GameCube that I can load the 240p test suite on. I'm going to do that. Okay. And that's what my other GameCube does. You gotta load it once, then it resets, then it works. Work, work, work. Yes. Hmm. Uh, yeah, that's super flickery. I don't know what to do about that. Is it? Oh, wait, maybe. Hold on, hold on. Maybe I can help with that flickering. First of all, because I think this is in PAL. 480i. All right, there we go. If I said my camera is coming in at 60 hertz, I set the screen to 60 hertz. So at least I understand you've got this big black bar here, but at least you uh, don't have that flickering. So what am I seeing? I'm seeing a lot of color bleed here. That's something... So let's just load it. Let's do it. So uh, where is the 240p test suite? Where did I put it? I think it's on the retro NAS. Uh, wait, that's this is not where I parked my car. Um, device selection. I have the broadband adapter. I'm very fortunate. I found one in Japan. Games. Uh, 240p test suite. Okay. Okay, there it's up. Can I... I'm just going to see if there's a way I could prop this up somehow and show you a little better. Um, mm -hmm. Let me just do that, right? Just do some of that and maybe a little... Yeah, okay. I don't know if I can get it any better than that. Because of the, so. Okay, I got that scroll, but mm, you know, it looks like you have no green, no blue, and a weak red. Two guns, look out. Yep. So let's go through and. Okay, let's go test patterns. So the I, I understand there's the rolling and there's a bit of the deflection around there, but uh, the colors are fairly accurate to what I'm seeing here. Test patterns. Okay, so I'm not, uh, it doesn't tell me much. Color bars. You know, I should, I'm trying to think, how can I do this with S video as well? It might help me a little bit, but, um, I can't, because of the GameCube, I've only got GameCube set up, and, <laughs> sorry, Bob's right. No, uh, I'm just writing to Bob. We're going to stream in a moment. Uh, I'm streaming. So anyway, okay, let's go down to RGB screens. Black, okay, red, green, blue, white. So I think this has always... It's a real color bleed. Blue, white, black. Hmm. So. No green, no blue, and a weak red. Well. Yeah, may maybe. Uh, you might be onto something there, James. Because it does look like a little 
I would almost say purplish, this screen. Black is black. Green is nothing. Blue. Um... That won't do anything. Um, let's go back to... Uh, at least my geometry is kind of okay. Let's have a go. Ooh, that is... I got that afternoon sun coming in the window. Um, yeah, so... Chroma is... You can see affecting things. Okay, so that's contrast that I'm messing with. Brightness, so yeah, okay. So this is something I'm gonna need to, oh, what are those things? There's always those ones there, which I've never understood what they do. There's a, a bias and gain, probably. Uh, what do we got? Guns could be bad, or you might need to try degals. Uh, G2 looks bad as well. Hey, Basil. Thanks, man. Uh, yeah, it's my first time doing this. And actually, the rest of them were working. I already fixed two of these monitors, but this one uh, has a different issue. I don't think this is the same one as James is saying. My guns could be bad, or I might... Oh, I don't even know... This thing doesn't have a degausser built in, actually. Uh... I mean, unless it's just got like a consumer set firing one off. And it starts up. Okay. Oh, wait, hold on. Blue only. Ah. But. Use a wand, you're right. I need the one Steve had in his video. Hey, now things are looking better. Wait. Oh, it was blue only on. Oh, okay. Wait, hold on. So. Sorry that the, the light is coming straight in the window here, but those colors now look quite very much better. Um, it's still... Okay, so this tube is still not good. Oh, your tube's fine. No, no, I think... Um, okay, it's not. the. It's not... Um, so, my work to resolder the points has fixed that problem. Now there is color. However, this set in general still has issues. It's still weak, I want to say. Um, the brightness. There's about a bit of chroma on this. Yeah, when I turn chroma up, it starts to look better. But now chroma is at maximum. And it's like, okay. The other thing is, you can see there as well. See this color bleeding that comes off the end of uh, fonts? In particular there that is not present on the other monitors so there is some color issue here I'm gonna send those knobs back to that uh, well we got the okay so you can kind of see now the colors are like it it's fine. It looks much better on the camera, actually. It doesn't look as good in person. It's dull is the best description that I've got for this now. Um, oh, needs a little geometry work, but okay, not too bad. Um, take the underscan. Your G2 voltage might be too high. So the color may be seen. What's a G2 voltage? This I do not understand. Where is this coming from? What does that mean? But, okay. Black. Green. Also there is... Wait, let's go back to here. You can kind of see it on the monitor that... Oh yeah, it's, I'm fucking with it by putting my hand there. But here... There's some extra brightness over on the edge here as well. Blue. White kind of has it. 
Yeah, okay, I gotta take my finger away. It's going with it. Green definitely has. There's like a brighter line there. I don't know if that's gonna be a factor. So, okay. Uh, let's just do a few more tests. So yeah, the good old Sonic test. Faded color. Okay. Um, so dark screen, faded color. That is something for another day. So, yo, hey everyone. Uh, so that this is gonna conclude this stream. I've almost I fixed two. Almost fixed the third. I fixed the problem, the color problem with this, but now it's got extra issues that I need to look at. Um, I'm going to be streaming with Bob real soon. We're going to be testing lag. Uh, we're going to be lag testing different devices like uh, like that PAL to NTSC converter. Uh, I was going to test. I got the this one. We're going to lag test this. Uh, I've, got, I've got some Extron devices that I'm going to be doing this. So... Uh, Okay, I'm throwing shit around the room. So anyway, uh, we're going to be on Retro RGB channel in like 10 minutes or something like that. So go check us out. We're over there. Thank you very much. Uh, I've never streamed my work before. And I'm honestly really surprised that things worked fairly well. Uh, these fixes worked and I managed to fix two BBMs. And um, thank you. I'm always a little nervous about live streaming. Like, oh God, ah. Um, so thanks. Um, I felt chill. I feel like I can just talk our way through it. And thank you for your input. Um, thank you. That helped me a lot. So yeah, thanks a lot, guys. Uh, go check out Retro RGB. I'll see you soon. Bye. Ciao. Let's turn off the stream. Does it stop? Stop streaming. Motherfucker. <laughs> All right, fuck you, I'll turn it off here.